People were killed and many more left homeless when Cyclone Harold hit the Pacific Islands earlier this month. The Category 5 storm has now passed, of course, but leaders in those nations are warning the public health emergency of coronavirus remains and have introduced lockdowns. This two-pronged emergency has put pressure on the Commonwealth to step in and help these small island member states. We're joined now from central London, thankfully, by the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Baroness Scotland. Baroness Scotland, really good to see you this morning. Just, good to just, see you too, Ian. Just give us an idea, if you can, Baroness Scotland, of, of the way in which Cyclone Harold, COVID-19, have, have come together to, yeah, and pun certainly not intended, create such a difficult situation, a perfect storm for the Pacific Islands. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one of the heartbreaking things because uh, the Commonwealth, as you know, has uh, 54 countries, 32 of them are small. And climate change has been an issue which has been heartbreakingly familiar to many of these small islands. So to have the uh, terrible, devastating impact of the hurricane at the same time as having to try and cope with the threat of the COVID-19 pandemic, it really is a perfect storm. Because one of the things that we've been advocating for, of course, uh, the pandemic is social distancing. And yet if you are hit by this tremendous cyclone, there is nowhere to go but to go together. So to try and control both is something which is incredibly difficult. And we've been worrying about uh, this right from the beginning because we know we're coming into a season when this will happen. But the cyclone has come earlier than we have expected. So for these tiny, vulnerable countries, they really are facing an existential threat, not just from climate change now, but also accelerating the impact by the COVID-19. So we've been trying in the Commonwealth to make sure that we have the sort of help and support for our small island states, which will really make the difference. Um, you know that for all of us, all over the world, the pandemic is new and the things that we've been trying to do have been uh, uh, test it and try it and see. But one of the great things is because we've got one third of the world, We've been able to pool the knowledge. What do we know that works? What do we know that does not work? And how can we help each other to get there faster? And the Commonwealth has been brilliant as a family of nations because they've just pooled all the information, all their expertise. And we're not just worried about the, the climatic change and the COVID. We're also worried about the economic consequences of this. Because if your main source of income is tourism and fishing, well, no one's coming to your island and no one is buying your fish for hotels and for um, restaurants because, of course, the majority of those are closed in the countries to which you'd sell. Okay. So these complex issues are all being looked at now as we try to put together a centre. We've got a, a, a covid um, response centre on our website, and we are pulling together all the tools that people need. As you say, Baroness Scotland, there needs to be ind individual responses determined by the individual country's needs. And yet throughout this whole COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a tension, hasn't there, between the multilateral organisations, the World Health Organisation, the United Nations, to an extent perhaps the Commonwealth, well, you might want to uh, challenge them in that. There's been a tension between what they have been saying is best practice and individual countries adopting their own approach. How useful have these multinational, multinational organisations actually been, given that we're seeing such yeah. divergence of approaches? Well, one of the things that I'm really proud of is that the Commonwealth has always acted as a family. If you think about what the Queen said in relation to what was happening in the 1940s, the Commonwealth came together as one to stand together, to share information and to help each other. And thank God that is what the Commonwealth is doing again, very practically, very conclusively. So in coming together and creating this coronavirus tracker, which is on our website, all our countries are coming together. We're looking how can we help each other? It's a dynamic tracker which measures the incidence rates of 
um, what is coming through. We're able to uh, really share the best practice. We're not just doing the WHO, um, the World Health Organization information. We're cross-referencing that with credible and independent sources, such as the John Hopkins University. We're looking at all the information we already have in our data set. But we're also creating taking use of our Commonwealth Climate Finance Access Hub. So we're looking at what money can we get into our countries? How can we assist them? And so far, through the Commonwealth Climate Finance um, Hub, we've already uh, 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 distributed $33.5 million worth of assistance to our countries. We've got about $500 million more in the pipeline. Just in Tonga, which has been hit, by the cyclone, we've been able to access and secure the tune of 2.73 million with a pipeline going to them of 60 million. So we're being really practical. Indeed. Bad Miss Scotland, I'm so sorry. We do have to leave it there. I'm sure you'll understand. We've got a lot to fit in the programme this morning, but really good uh, to get your views on the COVID-19 response. Bad Miss Scotland, thank you. Uh,